everyone, I'm Tiffany Trapuzio Wong, and this is the first video in the AOSCX Data Center Automation with Ansible series. In this video, I'll be introducing you to our project and its overall prerequisites, showcasing our developer hub, and showing you how you can get started with this project by cloning the repository and giving you an overview of your environment setup. So let's jump into it. Our vision at Aruba is to accelerate data center automation by leveraging the programmability power of AOS CX and working with third-party tools such as Ansible. In our journey to enable data center customers with automation, we've began by developing a set of Ansible workflows and even an Ansible inventory plugin that allow for turnkey day zero automation of an AOS CX data center deployment. These workflows utilize Ansible playbooks and inventories to configure devices to create entire data center fabrics based on three Aruba validated reference designs. The three architectures are campus attached data center top of rack, dedicated data center two tier, and dedicated data center layer three spine leaf topology. Look out for the next videos in these series where I go through each architecture, its requirements, and how to use this project to deploy that fabric. The best place to get started with understanding this project and generally all things automation at Aruba is the Aruba Developer Hub. This portal stands as an all-in-one resource for Aruba automation, whether that be for Ansible, the Network Analytics Engine, or even the PyAOS CX Python package. In the Developer Hub, you'll find everything you need to know regarding AOS CX and Ansible, as well as detailed guides on the AOS CX Data Center Automation with Ansible project and detailed descriptions of each VRD workflow. Now let's take a look at the project's GitHub repository. Our repository is located at github.com slash Aruba slash AOS CX Ansible DCN workflows. You can find the link to the repository in the description down below. This project includes sample final configurations for each of the workflows, Ansible filter plugins and task lists, Jinja2 templates, playbooks to configure each of the workflows, example inventory files, and finally, requirements files for both Python and Ansible. Now, this project does have some environment requirements before getting started. First, you must have Python 3.6 and higher, and obviously, you'll need to have Ansible installed and that should be at least the version 2.8.1 or higher. For instructions on how to install Ansible, check out the first video in the ArubaBots Automate with Ansible series. Once you have Ansible and Python installed, it's time to clone our GitHub repository. To clone the GitHub repository, simply have git installed on your machine and execute the git clone command followed by the repository. Now, once you have this repo cloned to your machine, it's time to install the required Python and Ansible dependencies. In the directory of the clone repository, you'll find the requirements.txt file, which outlines all the Python dependencies. Simply execute the pip install-r requirements.txt command, and pip will ensure you have all the required libraries installed. Then once that's done, it's time to install the Ansible dependencies, which is the AOS CX Ansible role. If you're new to using Ansible with AOS CX, I would recommend watching the fourth video in the Arubabots Automate with Ansible series, where I discuss the AOS CX role and how to use it. This project comes with multiple inventories, each correlating to a specific workflow. In this video, I'll explain the basic structure and guidelines for making this project's inventory your own. In later videos, I'll walk through each workflow's inventories and how to use them, and how they're used in the workflow themselves. If you remember from our previous video, users use YAML or INI files to define their Ansible inventory. Oftentimes in those files, they define all of their hosts in entirety with variables and information statically defined. In networking, and especially in the data center, our systems are ever-changing. Therefore, we require a more dynamic and easily accessible way to manage our devices. A way to achieve this is by using an inventory plugin. Inventory plugins are Python scripts that allow users to point to an external or local local data source to build their Ansible inventory dynamically. In environments where resources are always changing, or even when device information is already being managed by another system, this can be extremely useful. Inventory plugins are executed during Ansible setup phase, before executing a playbook. 
so you can always get the most up-to-date version of your inventory. In this project, you'll find YAML inventory files with statically defined variables, as well as additional YAML inventory files that point to the AOSCX DCN plugin. The AOSCX DCN plugin is an inventory plugin that converts a formatted Excel workbook and generates host inventory data to be used in conjunction with our playbooks to configure devices to form a data center fabric. This single plugin works to create an inventory for each of the shown validated reference designs for a data center fabric. What happens to my inventory file, you might ask? Well, you still have it. But instead of outlining all of your host data in your inventory file, you simply need to specify the name of the inventory plugin you want to use and any other additional information your plugin might require. For the AOSCXDCN plugin, you'll need to define the plugin name, the path to the Excel file, and the name of the Excel file you want to use. Each workflow uses a specific Excel template to generate Ansible inventory data to be used for that particular workflow. The plugin is built to recognize the type of deployment based on which Excel workbook that you use. Examples of these Excel files are located in the files directory of the repository. The names of the files can be changed and the values inside of the files can and should be modified to match your environment and fabric specifications. But the header cells should not be modified. I'll be walking through this process step by step for each workflow in future videos. So if this isn't making much sense now, be sure to watch the detailed walkthrough video for the workflow that you're wanting to automate. To better understand the significance of this project, I'll demonstrate it in action. In this demonstration, I'll show you how you can use this project to provision an entire data center fabric based on one of Aruba's validated reference designs for a spine leaf topology. Here, I have six devices, all AOS CX 8325s, and I'll prove the fabric connectivity through a Windows client reaching an Apache server that I've connected to each leaf respectively. So let's see it in action. Here is my Windows client. And as you can see, I have no connectivity to my Apache server. So let's see if we can change that. On my Ansible control machine, I already have a cloned version of the AOS CX Ansible DCN workflows repository. In the files directory, I can use one of the provided Excel workbooks for the design that I'm wanting to deploy. In this case, it's the Spine Leaf EBGP workbook. In my workbook, I've already populated the cells with my desired values to build my fabric. Specifically, I've defined each device's management IP information, which our project uses to configure each device using Ansible. So now that my workbook is all set up, it's time to run the playbook. But before we do that, here's a look at my devices. Here I have connections to just four out of my six devices, two spines and two leaves, one from each VSX pair. As you can see, they have a completely blank configuration besides a static IP address defined on that management interface. Returning to our Ansible control machine, it's time to run the Ansible playbook command. We run the Ansible playbook command, followed by the playbook for my desired fabric design and my inventory file, which is using the AOSCX DCN plugin, along with the Excel workbook I've modified to include my desired network configuration. And just like that, it's finished. So let's take a look at our devices. As you can see already, just by hitting the enter key, you can see my host names have changed for each of my devices. If I do a quick show run, you can see I have configurations populated for each. If I do a show BGP all summary, you can see that I have my BGP established. And if I do a show VSX brief, you can see that I have VSX configured and established on my leaves, but nothing on my spines. Just showing again how the AOS CXDCM plugin takes care of these granular configurations based on each device's role. Now let's take a look at our Windows client and look, it looks like our pings are being replied and successful. And if I do a quick refresh and success, the Aruba Apache server is working. So that just about concludes today's video. You should have a better understanding of the significance of this project, how to clone the repository and how to set up your environment. 
I'll see you in the next video of the series where I walk you through and demonstrate the first workflow of this project, the deployment of a campus-attached data center top of rack. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.